All right, welcome back to the Fruit Snacks podcast. I'm your hostess with the mostess, Emily Wardrop from Drop the Ward Life Coaching. I am excited to talk to you today about the, your relationships, relationship with your T1D kiddo relationship. We're going to take it as deep as we can in the next few minutes. Okay, so I am a life coach by trade. So some people would um, classify life coaches in three different areas. You can be a weight coach, you can be a money coach, or you can be a relationship coach, right? Like there's health, wealth, and relationships. These are things that people care about and need help with in their life, right? So we're trying to coach you about your life. What area of your life do you want to look at? Health, wealth, or relationship, right? So technically, when I was certified at the life coach school, I was certified as a life and weight loss coach. So technically, it can help you with your weight. And indeed, I even put together a coaching program about self-love for weight loss, um, which combines what I learned from Brooke Castillo at the life coach school and Brooke Snow and <laughs> um, my love for both of those Brooks is intense. Anyway, plus, you know, my own spin on all the things. So if you're interested in self-love for weight loss, that's, I think it's still even one of the options on my appointment page, dropthewar.com forward slash appointments. We can work on weight loss. But um, my predominant thought when I work on weight or wealth <laughs> um, as a money coach, I could do, I, I mean, basically as a coach, I can coach you on anything, right? And a lot of people have a lot of stress in their life about money. A lot of people have a lot of stress in their life about health. And, um, and both of those areas are great. And I can definitely help you with either. But the predominant thought I have about both of those is it doesn't matter. <laughs> Your weight, 100% does not matter. Your body, on the other hand, is sacred and very important. And um, and the way you think about your body is very important. So really what comes down to you is your relationship with yourself is very important. <laughs> and that is what we work on when we think that we need to lose weight. We think that we need to work on our weight. What we're really going to be working on is our relationship with ourself. Same with money. Did you know you have a relationship with money? Um, that is what we would work on if we were working on your wealth, right? So health and wealth actually is relationship because the money itself doesn't matter. The weight, the scale, the number on the scale, whatever, doesn't matter. But your relationship with yourself, the thoughts that you have about yourself, the amount of time you spend obsessing about your body could use some looking at. And that's what we do in coaching, right? Just to look at your thoughts your feelings, your actions, your results. These are the things that we can change. And if there's anything in any of those areas that you'd like to change, then let's do it. But where what does matter if money and um, you know, weight don't matter, what does matter is relationships. So that is why that is the area of focus that I've always focused on. Besides that, even if I focus on either of the other ones, it would really be about relationships anyway. So, but here in our T1D mom space, relationships are huge. Our relationship with our kiddo, that is where it's at. That's the whole entire point. Okay. So health is actually quite a bit part of it, right? So once I decide to niche down to T1D moms, it's like, well, am I relationship coaching or am I health coaching? Still relationship coaching <laughs> because the health part, the actual health part, that's kind of taken care of by your healthcare professionals. I'm not your healthcare professional. I'm a mental healthcare professional. So your mental health, your thoughts, your emotional health, your feelings, that is my wheelhouse, right? So I'm your mental and emotional support while you are taking care of your child with diabetes, which sounds like a health concern, but your healthcare professionals will help you with, help you with the health part. I'm here to help you with the mental part. So that is relationships. So what the heck even is a relationship? We throw this word around all the time as if it means something, but it's very ambiguous actually, if you stop to think about it and everyone sees it a little bit differently. Um, again, Brooke Castillo at the life coach school likes to define it as your relationship is really just your thoughts about another person, your thoughts about yourself, your thoughts about what you think that person's thinking about you, all of that. Your relationship is in your head. 
because your relationship is not something you can do a blood test and get an actual, you know, certifiable in the court of law result, right? There's no, there's no even blood test you can take to show that you have what kind of relationship you, you have with your husband, like you and this person, there's no, you know, tangible evidence. I mean, there's a piece of paper that shows that you were married, right? But um, even if we're going to dumb down the definition of a relationship as to, you know, are you married or single? Still, like, where's the proof of that exactly? So it's a mental construct is what I'm saying. So your relationship is in your head, meaning it's your thoughts. And so that is why relationship and life coaching go right hand in hand, because that is what we do is we look at your thoughts and what they are creating in your life. So your relationship with your T1D kiddo is in your control. Type one diabetes, if your kid has it, it is now your circumstance. So we cannot control our circumstance. That's the only part of the model we do not control. I mean, sometimes we can, and that'd be great. But when we cannot, that's when the, the model is really useful because the circumstance just is, and we can do lots of work around our thoughts about that circumstance and our feelings and actions and results in regards to that circumstance, even if we cannot change. Okay. So your kid has diabetes, but your relationship with your child is definitely in your control, not the diabetes. So let's, you know, we all are, let's admit it, control freaks, right? It's kind of just the way we were created. It's okay. Nothing shameful about it. How do you want to think about your kiddo? How do you want to think about diabetes? You have a relationship with diabetes. You have a relationship with the Dexcom or the Omnipod or, you know, whatever CGM you use or with shots or with insulin, every single thing, your thoughts about it, that's your relationship with it. So um, if you are sitting around thinking some nasty old thoughts about any of those circumstances, then why are we surprised that we're feeling all sorts of nasty old ways and having results that we don't want? Okay. So no, we cannot control whether our kid has diabetes or not, but we can control our results in regards to the diabetes. So that's why coaching is so fun. And that's what we do. And, um, and so let's dig in a little bit more about our relationship with our kid. Okay. So story time, <laughs> remember COVID, <laughs> So in 2020, um, my kids were home for spring break and then they never went back to school for like a good solid year. <laughs> so I only had one kid in school at the time. I had a bunch in preschool. So preschool was over and I actually really loved it because I just loved that phase of preschoolers having all my kids home. We had nowhere to be because the most stressful part of my life is getting kids in the car to go somewhere. <laughs> So we only had to do that once a week to go to church. And other than that, we could just chill and just be and just have fun and just hang out. And it was the best. And all of a sudden this preschool thing, like threw a monkey wrench in my life. And I was like, oh, I have to get kids in the car and go somewhere. And then school, school was even worse. It was like every day. I was like, what is this? And so I got to tell you, I was pretty excited <laughs> when they didn't have to go back to school after spring break. Um, so our quarantine experience was super fun because it was back to the good old days, except that school was on me now. And I was like, wait, what? This kid, no way. <laughs> like ever since he was born, he would not sit in my lap and let me read him a book. <laughs> like anything scholastic, he was not interested. He just wanted to play. He just wanted to do his own thing. He did not want me to teach him anything. He's like this little genius that's like really good at stuff just naturally. And then if he's not, he's got like no patience for himself. And I got no patience for his no patience. <laughs> we had a lot of lack of patience around here. Anyway, all of that was the perfect storm to just be a huge explosion when we're trying to do kindergarten on Zoom. I mean, I love me some Zoom. I've been doing Zoom for a long time, long before the pandemic with this life coaching stuff. But it's not made for kindergartners, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like it was a disaster. So my relationship with him was really struggling. And that is when I decided like my relationship is more important than anything, like more important than him learning how to read, more important than him learning whatever math he's supposed to be learning in kindergarten. I mean, 
my relationship is the most important part. So my thoughts, feelings, and actions towards this kid, that is what I'm defining as my relationship. And it was suffering. <laughs> like You can just start with the action line to see how terrible the relationship was. <laughs> and I was like, no, this is, this has got to stop. So, um, and I got to tell you, diabetes actually put the monkey wrench into the monkey wrench because I was making it happen. I mean, by then he was in first grade, um, virtual first grade, which is very different than homeschooling first grade, which is very different than, I mean, you guys were there, right? You know what happened during COVID. So, um, yeah, I mean, I tried to try kind of all through kindergarten going into first grade, halfway through first grade, his little sister gets this diabetes diagnosis. And so I'm like literally crying to his first grade teacher on Zoom. I'm like, I can't be a pancreas and a first grade. <laughs> like I can't do it. I did learn a lot about the English language from my first grade training on Zoom because my son wasn't there, but I was there. <laughs> but I cannot do his schoolwork for him. Like I cannot be that first grader and be a pancreas anymore. Like, so actually... <laughs> The diabetes was almost a little relief from taking on his, his school Zoom experience during COVID. Mm -hmm. But the point is, the relationship was hardcore suffering through all of that. And so I had to put relationship first. Like the most important part of any of this, like why do I even want him to be educated? You know, we got to step back and look at these things and think about them. Mm -hmm. Like what is a big deal about school? Like why does he even need to learn how to read? <laughs> And do I want him to? Oh, okay. Well, yeah, he kind of needs to learn how to read. And I can think of some like legit reasons why, okay, now I'm a little more motivated to actually do something about it versus, you know, the social pressure or, you know, you just got to figure out what your reasons are and then whether you like them or not. And then that kind of cleans up your whole um, actions around it. So, all of that is the work we do in coaching. But the point is that the relationship, like my thoughts about him, my feelings towards him and the actions I was taking in regards to him were not pretty, right? And so I decided I need to clean all that up. That is way more important than getting whatever random homework done on Zoom, right? So let's bring that back to your T1D kiddo. So the same was happening at the same time because I have more than one kid, got lots of relationships <laughs> juggling at the same time. And now this other daughter is having um, to get shots and get her finger pricked and get, you know, count carbs and all the drama, right? Especially with a new diagnosis, all the drama. So there was a lot of new thoughts, a lot of new feelings, a lot of tears sp spilt in the kitchen in overwhelm and frustration and fear and all the things, right? <laughs> so... Um, so when we talk about your mental and emotional, your mental and emotional health in regards to diabetes, I mean, there's a lot, right? And all of that is all wrapped up in your relationship with this child too. So your relationship with diabetes, obviously, but also like the actual child, this is what matters. Okay. I mean, keeping them alive matters, but also your relationship with them really matters. So what are you thinking about them? What are you thinking when it's time to do a pod swap and they don't want to and they're crying, pitching a fit, whining and whatever? Like, what are the thoughts? What are your feelings? This is work worth doing, right? Is to figure out your own experience with that child. That is what your relationship is. So what are you thinking about your T1D kiddo right now? What are some of your predominant thoughts? Like if you were going to write a story, what's the headline? And then what's it filled with? Because <laughs> once we headline our stories, then our brain goes to work finding evidence for that story. So if I want to um, label, right? These are the labels that we give our kids. If we want to label our kid as um, things that usually we don't say out loud. This is what we do in coaching. Is we dump out all the things in our brains that we've been stuffing down because they're not pretty. <laughs> And we only want to think and feel and act pretty, right? It's not pretty. So our not so pretty little thoughts like, oh, this, like, um, like bratty. Maybe is that in there, shoved in there somewhere? Oh, my kid is such a brat. Why can't they just this, that, and the other, right? Um, These are the things that we need to dig out because as we shove them down in, they're affecting our relationship, even though we're trying to shove away the 
thoughts and we're judging ourselves for having those thoughts, right? But they exist. They're in there wreaking havoc. So we've got to clean them out, okay? Which means we've got to get them out and then we can keep them out. But if we just keep shoving them down, guess what? They're not out. They're in <laughs> and they're they're still working their models. Those thoughts are there. That's why you're feeling so crappy because you got all sorts of crappy thoughts, whether you like them or not. So they're there. Let's acknowledge them without the judgment so that we can be released from them. Okay. And that is what your relationship is with your kiddo is those festering thoughts that are causing the feelings that are driving the actions. That is your relationship. Okay. So that is the work we do in coaching is the work on our relationship with our kiddo. Let's talk a little bit more. We have a relationship with the diabetes itself, with the CGM, with the numbers. So again, in weight loss, you have a relationship with the scale and we try to make the scale neutral. It's just numbers. Numbers seem to be something that you can make neutral because they're very objective. You know, it's an actual data point. If you're trying to make a smart goal, something like trackable, then you need numbers, right? So we think numbers are logical. Numbers are just facts, right? But turns out numbers are seeped in drama <laughs> because numbers are not cold hard facts. I mean, they are, but you jump from that cold, hard fact circumstance to the thought really quick. because <laughs> So the meaning that we give the numbers, the thoughts that we're thinking about the numbers make the numbers drama, right? So if the number is just your circumstance, it's neutral, it's drama free, but we have thoughts about it instantly. So you step on a scale, you have some thoughts, <laughs> like one way or the other, you have having thoughts, there's the drama. And that's why weight loss coaching is so fun. That's why it's something you know, tangible and explainable that you do in coaching, right? Like when you're a relationship coach, it's a little more uh, fuzzy. <laughs> it's a little harder to explain what you do, but weight loss coaching is like, you're going to lose weight, you know, or money coaching, you're going to earn more money. But like relationship coaching is like, oh, you're going to have a better relationship. Like, what does that mean exactly? And so your relationship with your CGM or your A1C score, like numbers, right? So you look at your CGM and it tells you a blood sugar number for your child and you instantly make that mean a bunch of stuff. And that's the drama that we want to look at. Because if you can just keep it neutral, that it's just, you know, numbers on a page or numbers on a, you know, little thingy <laughs> device, then um, the no coaching needed, whatever. You just see the number, you know what to do about it, you do it. But between that neutral circumstance number and your action line to take care of it, there's a whole bunch of drama in your thoughts and your feelings, right? So that's why we work on mental and emotional health. So again, back to the example of the, so yeah, so weight loss, right? I've done it. I know how to do it. I've done it. I know how to lose weight. I've done it. Guess what? Lots of times. You know why that is? Because I gained the weight back, right? And so there's lots of weight loss coaches that are like, I'm going to help you lose weight for the last time. And I'm like, mm. if what you claim that you can help people with as a life coach, you have to have achieved yourself. I'm not claiming that one. Because <laughs> yes, I know how to lose weight, but I also know how to gain it back. Super easy. <laughs> and that is the way the human brain works, right? So relationships are not... um going to be linear either. So if you look at my weight loss um, history, it says roller coaster is looking at a CGM, right? It's like, it's up, down, all around, everywhere, all the time. It's, it's a good time. It's a good story. <laughs> you know, like just staying in range is not dramatic. Therefore, it does not make a good story. <laughs> right? We like drama actually turns out as humans. So, um, so that's okay. Right. You look at a CGM and it looks like a roller coaster ride. And guess what? We love roller coasters. We pay big bucks and stand in line for long times to go on roller coasters that last like 30 seconds. So why do we hate the roller coaster so much? Let's just think about this here. It's fun, right? It's a challenge. It's a game. It's enjoyable. Let's look at these thoughts that we think about actual roller coasters, we can apply to the roller coaster of their numbers also, you know, because the numbers themselves are neutral, but we just want to make drama because it's fun. So why don't we just enjoy that? Fun? <laughs> right? <laughs> huh? Easier said than done. Anyway, so what we make the mean 
creates a drama. So um, this is just, you know, good information to look at. Just notice the awareness piece, right? When you look at the CGM or when it like beeps in the middle of the night, what are your thoughts that are causing you to freak out? And then manage your mind. <laughs> you don't have to think those thoughts. It's okay if you do. Feel the feelings. We're not resisting anything here. We're just changing intentionally what you'd like to think and feel instead about the numbers. Okay, one last note about relationships. You also have a relationship with God. So I like to bring this in with T1D almost every episode, right? Because the circumstance just kind of is, right? And so we like to make meaning, right? With our human brains, we also like to place blame. <laughs> That's part of making meaning. <laughs> like whose fault is this? Who sinned, him or his parents, that this, this uh, circumstance has come upon them, right? No one. No one has sinned, <laughs> okay? You didn't do anything wrong. It's not your fault. You don't have to blame yourself. You don't have to blame your husband. You don't have to blame the grandma. You don't have to blame society or the man or whatever conspiracy theory. You don't have to blame anyone. It just is what it is. And when there's no one to blame, then we tend to blame God because we're like, okay, well, it's all his fault. And I definitely fall into that camp in a less blamey kind of way, but more of a like a of a purpose of life kind of way, you know, like the whole purpose of life is for life to be hard while well, we were just coasting, you know, virtual first grade wasn't hard enough. We had needed more hard. <laughs> so we got diabetes. We got that figured out. So we got pregnant. <laughs> that was hard. And we had a baby and diabetes. Oh, we kind of got that figured out. Okay. We need more hard. Okay. How about another diagnosis? <laughs> so now we have two kids with type one diabetes and a baby and, um, making up for virtual first grade still in fourth grade. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, life is hard and it's supposed to be hard. We're here to grow and develop and, and whatever you can't grow and develop in ease. Right. So that's kind of the summary of how I look at it. And, and not as explicitly inside that is kind of blaming God. <laughs> so, but blaming him in like an omniscient sort of, he knows what's best for me and he knows that the heart is good kind of way. Right. So whatever I got to do to make it through the day, right? We just come up with these thoughts and stories to just help us make it through the day and night with diabetes, right? So anyway, all of that is encompassed in our relationship with God, right? So um, I feel like the age old question about like grace versus works, you know, is just sort of blown out of the water when you look at it as a relationship. So it's not about the A line at all. It's not about the action line. It's not about what are you doing? Like, are you doing to save yourself or are you believing in grace to have Jesus save you? Like, yeah, both of those are good questions. Faith versus works. But at what point are you tipping too far one way or the other? And we're really not good at balance as humans. Um, moderation is not really our thing. And it's like micro adjustments all the time, balance, balance, whatever balancing between grace and works but like all of that's just blown out of the water when you look at it as relationship and i've been hearing this so much lately that it's just about our relationship with god right like the actions are given us to help us develop our relationship with god not that all of those actions are going to be used against us in the end as our judgment draws near like we're not going to be judged by our actions alone i mean it's part of the um, equation, but the equation, what that actually is, is the relationship. You know, we're trying to define this elusive, what's a relationship, it's thoughts, feelings, and actions all combined. Like it's not just the actions. We're not just being judged by our actions. We're being judged by our thoughts, our desires, our motives, our feelings. It's not like any of our thoughts or feelings are bad as in morally wrong. We've talked about this so much, like in the anger episode and scared and stuff like that. So the feeling itself is not morally wrong. So you're not going to be judged and sent to hell because you felt a feeling or even because you did an action. It's all of that combined is what our relationship is. It's, become, it's who we become, right? If we're going to be judged in the end, it's judged on just who we've become. Like, who are you? And you, um, and that I feel is kind of like our relationship with God, right? Is our thoughts, feelings, actions towards him, with him? What are we doing to build that relationship? And in the same way as this whole episode was supposed to be about our relationship with our T1D kiddo, right? Like your thoughts and feelings towards them, it's like, it's just how you feel towards them and how is that relationship doing? And 
and you can you can just kind of feel it right it's that resonance dissonance thing you know like are you feeling warm and fuzzy toward this kid or are you just like so frustrated irritated annoyed all the time because this diabetes thing is relentless <laughs> and there's so many thoughts and feelings and actions mixed in with all of it and there's so much um juicy coaching work to be done in this space which is why i decided to be the t1d mom's coach because there's so it's because this matters it does matter it's not like a number on a scale i mean it kind of matters because your health matters your body for sure is sacred and that matters and and so the health of your kiddo matters i mean we want to keep them alive that matters but like our relationships endure past our bodies like just this life you know so this life, our bodies are important and they matter. And I have a whole eight week program about that. <laughs> and our kiddos bodies also, but really what matters and what lasts forever is this more intangible stuff, this relationship stuff. And so that's why it's so fun. So if any of this is resonating and you want to dig deeper with me, it makes a lot more sense when we've got the actual application going on, <laughs> like we can dig into your brain. It's so fun. <laughs> and your feelings and your actions and all the things, right? Let's get the results that we want, no matter our circumstance. We have a kiddo with T1D. That is our circumstance now. How do you want to think and feel and act to build a good relationship, feel good about your kiddo, feel good about the whole entire life that you are have now been built, right? Drop the war, lifecoach.com forward slash appointments. You can jump on a free Zoom call with me. I do complimentary coaching calls to check it out and um and we'll get started it's gonna be fun see you on zoom thanks for listening like to you next time bye